People talk a lot about being trauma bonded, but what does that actually mean? Some people mistakenly think it's when two traumatized people form a bond because they have that shared experience of trauma. And that happens, but that's not what it means to be trauma bonded. If you were abused or neglected as a kid, you have probably been through it and I wanna help you make sure that it never happens to you again. A trauma bond is another name for a dynamic also known as intermittent reinforcement, where one person gives intense affection and approval to the other person and then alternates it with neglect and disapproval and abandonment or even abuse. Would this kind of emotional on-off torture, blowing hot and cold to the point of cruelty, would it drive away prospective partners? You'd think so, right? This ugly treatment should signal major danger to anyone who actually wanted to be loved, but that's exactly where people traumatized as kids are vulnerable. If that's you, you probably recognize right away what I'm talking about, whether you had a name for it or not at the time. And you've already noticed that when someone treated you like this, loving you, then turning cold and betraying you over and over again, it has this insidious power to hook your mind, to grab onto your heart and keep you obsessed and sad and feeling too messed up to get out. Now, trauma bonding can, in theory, happen to anyone. In warfare, it's a form of psychological manipulation that's used on prisoners of war to break them down and get them to abandon their loyalty to their own cause or to their own self-interest and instead to become completely dedicated to serving their captors. And it's a terrible thing to do to a person because it's playing on deep wiring from infancy. And it's a survival tactic to do whatever it takes to stay protected and connected to a parent, even if that parent is abusive. And it's interesting, isn't it, that you can trip that wire in an adult. Because in adulthood, clinging to a destructive relationship is purely maladaptive. It reminds me of the way mistreated animals stay loyal to abusive owners. It's like they have an involuntary reflex to stick around and keep appreciating the little bit of affection that they get. When I was six years old, I went to a little roadside attraction once where they had chickens in wire cages and you could put a coin in the slot and an electric current would run through the wires and make the chickens you know, dance around to some this tinny little music that cranked out of a machine attached to the cage. And I'll never forget that, just being totally charmed for five seconds. And then I asked my brother like, how can they train chickens to dance? And he explained, actually they're not dancing, they're being shocked in their feet, there's an electric shock. And I had made that shock begin by putting my little dime in the slot and I couldn't make it stop after that. And that poor chicken jumping around in there, I'll never forget it. Trauma bonding is like a groove in your psyche that can form in your childhood when a parent, sometimes intentionally, but sometimes for reasons beyond their control, could only give love and attention to you some of the time. And if they're caught up in alcoholism and addiction, it's very common to be you know, super loving, then suddenly they're just totally out of it and even rageful and out behaving dangerously. And then they sober up and they're so, so sorry and they wanna make it up to you and they're so affectionate. Or the extra sorry phase never comes. And a kid learns to hang on every tiny sign that the parent loves them, every little crumb of praise or attention and it very easily does long lasting damage to a kid's emotions and their self concept. And then when that kid grows up, it shows up as a, just like a crazy high tolerance for the same kind of treatment from partners. It shows up as an attraction to unavailable people, as love addiction, as a willingness to stay and even an inability to leave abusive partners. And none of this is fulfilling. None of it is happy. It's, it's a mental hook. It creates a sense of dread about losing the relationship that's completely unrealistic, except when someone is literally a captive. You could leave, but you don't. And there's a compulsion in trauma bonding to keep trying and trying that if you could just figure out the right words, the right behaviors, the right responses, you could win the love of this hot and cold person and the love would get switched on for good. That's what it feels like, right? That's probably what the little chicken thought, like 
Finally, I can just have my food and relax. But that never comes. The dime keeps going in the slot. Now, some of you watching this will have been through a trauma bond relationship with someone very dominating who did this to you. And some of you will have done this to another person. And it's true, there are people who study these tactics and do them on purpose. But I think, you know, 95% of the time, it's not anything planned out. It's a dynamic that develops between two people who have been conditioned in the past to have an intense emotional response to abandonment, to even eroticize it. And yes, there could be abuse. And if you're in an abusive relationship, I'm going to tell you flat out to get out of there. But in this video, I'm talking about not about abuse per se, but about an unhealthy, unhappy dynamic when one partner isn't reliable or committed or equally into the other person. And the result for that other partner is to be hooked. The intense feeling of love and relief that comes rushing back when you're allowed back into the arms of the person who abandoned you. It feels like the greatest love of all time, doesn't it? But it's not actually love. It's a bug in the system in your conditioned responses that makes you hold on for dear life when you feel threatened with being rejected. Feels like love, but it's more like the dance of the chicken in the cage. It's an involuntary response to a stimulus. And in other words, if getting hooked in a trauma bond with someone blowing hot and cold has happened to you, it was involuntary. It's not your fault. And I want you to get out of the shame and self attack that you've maybe been carrying around these relationships. And there can be a lot of shame. You've been hooked on someone and all your friends can see the person doesn't treat you well. They tell you to leave, you know, they're right, but it feels impossible. But here's why I want you to be strong and to open up to learning some strategies to get free. Because for people with CPTSD, the more time that you spend living on the emotional crumbs in a trauma bond, the harder it is to change. You'll be driven to try, but you don't want to get good at handling this lousy treatment. You don't want to learn to accept it. You want to be bad at it. You want to give voice to that part of you that still knows that this is not what you were meant for. You were born to be loved. You are designed to thrive when you're safe and accepted and supported, just like when you were a kid. And if you're in a relationship where you don't have those things, then effectively you're blocked from your full development. And so it's so important for you to heal and change that dynamic, either by getting out of it or no longer contributing to it because it takes two to be in a trauma bond. And if you're not literally captive to someone, you're the only one who can change the way you relate to that bond. It's you. You've got to fight your attachment to the idea that somehow the other person will change or someone else will come along to save you. You're going to save you. That's the first thing to understand. The second thing is to address the void in your life that makes the drama of loneliness of a trauma bond seem like something that you would want at all. It makes it seem like it's the best you can do. And I'd wager that you're also suffering from a lack of connection with other people in your life. Maybe you're ashamed of your relationship and you're hiding or you're keeping people at arm's length so that they won't judge you. But you need a friend or two. You need people who you can tell, who you can be honest with about what you're going through. And just because you're in a hard relationship, it doesn't mean you have to leave. Sometimes just being connected with people, with another person, it reduces the pressure on your relationship and it reduces the need that you have for that relationship to be everything for you. And sometimes that's enough to produce a positive change in the dynamic. And this is especially true when two people who love each other and want to be in a relationship are still trauma bonded in some degree by fighting, going through drama too much of the time, and even using those upsets to then trigger the happy reunion. The removal of the threat of the breakup and the restoration of harmony uh, can function as kind of a mini trauma bond in itself. And a couple could go their whole life doing this. But if you have CPTSD, it's going to create a constant pull backward in your healing progress. And it's a constant trigger reactivating your dysregulation and your trauma wounds. So peace is a better goal. If you're in a relationship you want to preserve and you both want peace, you can reduce the drama by drawing a hard line against dramatic statements 
and threats to the future of the relationship. You can start there. If you don't threaten abandonment, you don't get the high of the happy reunion. There's a lot of communication that needs to happen instead, and it'll take time. But you can start to strengthen your real bond and not have it be so dependent on adrenaline and endorphins to feel real to you, right? Makes it feel like more substantial. If you're in a relationship where you're genuinely not loved though, and you're aware the right thing to do is to leave, then get support from friends to make your transition out as quietly and intentionally and as drama-free as possible, because that will help prevent re-triggering the trauma bond, re-triggering your attachment wounds and your abandonment wounds. Though that's what's gonna kind of like, that's what locks you into the trauma bond no matter how bad it gets. Friends help soften that. Having friends and practicing connecting with people makes leaving much more doable. Without friends, it feels unthinkable, right? But with friends, you can envision a life where you're going to be okay. You'll have people to hang out with, maybe a place to stay while you get your life sorted out. Those are good things. A trauma bond is in many ways like a drug addiction and you've got to be ready because it can feel like withdrawal when you pull away from it. So strategies for a smooth exit is something, you know, I teach in my dating and my relationships course. You know, how to change your patterns and do the work to be ready for something lasting and real. So I'll put a link to that down below if you want to check that out. You can learn to date differently. You can learn to have a different pattern of relationships and to be conscious next time with clarity and support to not fall into your old pattern and to not get involved with abusive or unavailable people. Healing is possible, and I want you to feel that in your bones. A better life is possible for you, one where you're safe and you're loved and you have what you need because you deserve that. You're meant for it. And if you want to learn more about trauma bonding and how to get out of it, I've got this video lined up right here, and I will see you very soon.